Hello everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we're going to have a look at repeating the last operation. So this can be incredibly useful if you're trying out different things and you want to just repeat something over and over again. Later on we'll get to things like array modifiers which can repeat things but this specifically just repeats the last action that you've done. So in this particular case let's take the top part of our structure here. What we can do is go ahead and just scale it up. We can see that I've applied a scale factor to it and what I can now do is pick any other object and just go shift and R. Now obviously with something like this if I wanted to scale them all up by the same amount I could select them all first and then scale them up. Now providing that I've got the origin set to individual origins, if you had medium point and you're following along you'd have ended up like something like this with it blowing apart, but if we've got it selected to individual origins you'll end up with a, a very similar effect and that's fine. So how else can this be used really quickly? Well let's say we've got a compound action, so duplicating is an action but really it's not just duplicating, if we go ahead and do that, we've duplicated and we've moved. And by the way, if you're looking at something from top down and we duplicate something and move it or just move it in general, it will not move on the Z axis unless you explicitly tell it to. So that's a good way of constraining things to another axis, is to just look at it from one of the side top or front views. So the other thing that we can do here is now that I've duplicated it and that was the last action I took, I could go shift and R and create almost like a walkway to this central area. Now this can be accomplished in a much more dynamic way using an array modifier which we'll touch on later on but for the moment this is a great way of just repeating something and just seeing how it looks and it's a bit more organic and free flowing than it might be otherwise. Okay, so repeating your last operation is an incredibly useful thing to have in your tool belt. And I think what I'll do here is I will save this new scene as Stonehenge 2. There we go. So that's coming along really well. I'm really excited as to what these tools are enabling you to do. So if you've gone off and you've made something a bit different from what I've gone, or perhaps you've taken it up to the next step and started making a much more complex scene, please do share your work. I'd love to see how you're getting on. But for the moment, we'll leave this video there. And in the next one, we'll talk about organizing our work before we go on to our midsection challenge. I'll see you in the next video.